welcome to Super Citizen TV, the only television program in the entire state of Maryland that is conservative. We are with you every other Sunday, and we want to thank you for tuning in. I'm Pat McDonough. Get ready for an exciting program. I hate to say it, but I feel like I need to feel sorry for the Democrat Party, or maybe the Democrat Party. The Iowa caucuses, no big surprise, anytime the Democrats are in charge of something, it gets all messed up. I mean, just look at every major city in the United States, particularly Baltimore City. Nothing's right. It's the city who can't shoot straight, and I think the slogan should be, you can't fix stupid. But that's the Democrats. Now. They not only can't manage everything, but worse than that, the Democrat Party is in big trouble. The old Democrat Party that we knew of Roosevelt, Johnson, Truman, and Kennedy, well, they've been hijacked by Bernie and Warren and AOC. The Dems can't blame anybody for this hijacking. They opened the door to socialism with their liberal tax and spend agenda that they've had for all these years. Now the socialists are ready to take control. Bernie Sanders voters want Bernie to win. They don't care if he doesn't beat Trump. They just want him to win so they can take over the Democrat Party. If Bernie wins, they take over uh, the whole national party, all the appointments, all the money, and that's what they want. Socialists know that it takes time to complete their mission, but they're very patient. The socialist whole plan is to capture the Democrat Party, and I think they're well on their way. Four years from now, the Clintons, Bur uh, Biden, Bernie, Elizabeth Warren, they all will be gone. They won't be around anymore. Obama will have very little impact on the new Democrat Party. Obama wanted transformation during his eight years. Well, he got it. He didn't transform America, although he tried. Donald Trump is helping us to get rid of little transformation that he had there. But he did transform the Democrat Party, just like Lincoln and the Republicans wiped away the Whig Party, now going into the dustbin of history is the Democrat Party, the old Democrat Party. So the question is, what will happen now? You know, the natural constituencies of the old Democrat Party, the old Democrat coalitions, the African Americans, the suburban women, the traditional liberals, they're going to need to decide if, if they want to become socialists or they're not going to have a home to go home to. Goodbye, liberty. Goodbye, Constitution. Hello, Cuba. Hello, Iran. Hello, Venezuela. Because they're all going to be friends of America when the socialists take over. But it's also going to be goodbye, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. What's left of the old Democratic Party has demonstrated that they have become liarcrats. They lie about everything. They never tell the truth. I mean, they tell more lies than CNN and Don Lemon. And that's a lot of lies. We've seen this, that they've constantly attacked this president who has constantly achieved accomplishments. In his State of the Union message, he told us about all of those accomplishments. And you can't take them away. You can lie about them, but you can't take them away. So Schiff, Pelosi, and Schumer have what? Zero accomplishments. They brought it on by themselves. Their party has become a hate America, blame America, destroy America party. Thank God we've had President Trump in office who is dedicated to America first. He's a fighter that's tough enough to handle all the lies and punch back. It's going to be an interesting future for America. We now have the Socialist Party versus America's Party. At Mr. Free Shop, we have smart design, for smart people. Why try to explain yourself to deranged liberals? Let your apparel say exactly what's on your mind. Check out our line at MrFree.shop and remember, wear what you think, wear what you think, wear what you think, what you think. Senator Johnny Ray Sailing, it's your turn on my turn. The crime initiative, we see already in Baltimore County, there's an 85% increase rate of homicides. 
and we see around the area Montgomery County rates uh, carjacking all these problems we have with crime. It should be more of a crime initiative in Baltimore City, but in Baltimore County too and other areas where we need this help. There's got to be accountability. There's got to be a way where we can tell these people, if you do this, you're going to get this, and we're not doing that. So we got to fight the fight. The only way we can do that is, is make sure there's accountability when they do the crime. They got to do the time. There's so much more to me, South Annapolis. I want you just to call down there, call your senator, call your delegate, tell them you got to fight the crime, you got to put the right in place, help our city, help our state. That's the only way we can make a difference. Senator Sound, God bless you. Join the club, the Super Citizen Club. Let your voice be heard across the state. For just $20 a year, you'll receive inside access to our social media network direct delivery of our Super Citizen newsletter, and advance notice and discounts to our special events and more. Call 410-238-0025. Join the club, the Super Citizen Club, today. Delegate Kevin Hornberger talks to us about a very serious subject. We talk about our liberty in America, the Second Amendment, very important to all of us, and it looks like the Maryland General Assembly, or as I used to call it, the Maryland General Asylum, is heck bent on taking away our firearms. My name is Delegate Kevin Hornberger, and I serve in the General Assembly. We're in session right now, and it's my pleasure to represent Cecil County, but I'm actually here today as a call to action. If you're following the session, we've had one really terrible bill come across the desk and already get passed out of the House. It's called HB4. It's a long gun transfer bill. Anyone out here there who is a sh uh, trap shooter, likes to go bird hunting, anything to do, do with a shotgun, you will now, under this law, have to meet with an NFFL dealer to do a transfer amongst your family, amongst your friends, if someone wants to borrow your firearm, or if you want to sell it person to person. This bill is flawed on so many levels. For one, it doesn't include all members of your family. For example, great-grandparents are not included. Neither are uh, brothers-in-law, sisters-in-laws, cousins-in-laws. Registration of these guns is going to lead to one thing. You all know what I'm talking about at home, confiscation. Maryland will not stop until it has every single gun in the state tagged to a certain person so that it, at some point in time they can come and try to confiscate those weapons. When we have exploding violent crime in Baltimore City, in Baltimore County, record record crime, record violent crime, we are passing long gun transfer bills. The lowest percentage of crimes in this state, and at the national level as well, are committed with long guns. And when they are, they're always committed with stolen long guns. This bill has no impact on those. I'll go one step further, and that's why I'm calling for this call action tonight. If someone steals a firearm for your home, and it's a shotgun, and the value of that shotgun is less than $1,500, this bill does not apply. That's petty theft. That's six months in, in jail. We need to be strengthening laws on violent crime. We need to go after folks that break laws and increase the felony and the prison time for those that steal firearms, the perpetrators of these crimes. What I want everyone that's at home watching to do is to get on your laptop, get on your cell phone, and find out who your state senator is, okay? The only hope that we have of getting rid of this bill is killing it on the Senate side. They're cooler heads over there. They're folks that are more concerned about crime than we are in the House of Delegates. Republicans, we fought this bill. We did get it amended, but it's, it's not nearly in the posture that it needs to be. So again, today I want you to look up your state senator, call them, email them, send them a letter, and say, please, please, please kill HB4. And with that, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Pastor David Lewis joins us, and he's going to tell us about how fortunate or blessed we may be in terms of leadership for the United States of America. The Old Testament prophet Daniel, he of lion's den fame, tells us in the book that bears his name that God places and removes kings and leaders. King Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, tells us that God turns the hearts of those leaders in whatever way he pleases. And the apostle Paul told the Romans that those who are in authority are placed there by the Lord. Now, I tell you all of that to tell you this. Donald Trump is God's man for the job. I don't expect liberals and unbelievers to agree with that, 
After all, how can people who believe in God be for abortion and same-sex marriage? I have a problem with liberals, but I can't change them. What I can do is pray for them. Pray that God would open their eyes to the truth. The bigger problem that I have is with Christians and Jews who say they're God's people, but don't act like it. God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. And is there any blood more innocent than the blood of an unborn baby? Yet how many Christians vote Democrat, the party that worships at the altar of abortion? Donald Trump is the first president to speak in person at the Right to March, the Right to Life March in January of this year in Washington, D.C. How many Christians, though, want him thrown out of office? Donald Trump, the first president to move the United States Embassy in Israel to the capital city of Jerusalem. But where's the American Jewish vote? How long will God give the window of opportunity that is currently open under President Donald Trump? Well, we may find the answer to that in the Bible. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for lack of enough righteous people in the land. King Solomon said, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. Sodom and Gomorrah were known for their sexual promiscuity. It's from there that we get the word sodomy. And America now is well known for the sodomites who flaunt their sin. How long before God's judgment will come down upon the United States? We certainly deserve to have it happen, but God has given us a reprieve under Donald Trump. Will we take advantage of it? Are you listening, America? Now here's a news flash. The Democrats don't like you. The Democrats at CNN really don't like you. As a matter of fact, they think you're credulous boomer rubes. How rude. But don't take my word for it. Here's what they said about you, your family, and anyone else who dared support and vote for Donald Trump. That Donald Trump couldn't find Ukraine on a map if you had the letter U and a picture of an actual physical crane <laughs> next to it. He knows that this is, you know, an, an administration defined by ignorance of the world. And so that's partly him playing to their base and playing to their audience, uh, you know, the, the, the credulous boomer rube demo that backs Donald Trump um, that, that wants to think that, that, that Donald Trump's a smart one and they're, oh, y'all, y'all, y'all elitists are dumb. You, you elitists with your geography and your maps and your spelling, even though my... This is CNN. Is most trusted name in news. Were you confused about the Iowa caucus? I was confused. And I thought, well, if I'm confused, I bet there are a lot of people who are confused. Because the, Demo the Democrat Iowa caucus is a confusing thing. So I'm going to explain to you how it works, very simply. The first thing you do to start an Iowa caucus is get a large room. In Iowa, they have 1,600 large rooms. And then you have your caucus members sign into the room so you know you're there. And then you have the candidate's representatives all give a short speech and tell you who you should vote for. And then you pick your candidate, not by writing on a ballot. You pick your candidate by walking to a part of the room because each part of the room is designated for each candidate, like, like, uh, Mayor Pete might be over by the closet, and you might have, you might have uh, Bernie Sanders over by the Russian flag. And each part of the room is divided up, and that's where you stand. And then, if your candidate gets less than 15% of the vote overall, you are considered, your candidate is considered to be what they call unviable. So you have to move. So all of the candidates, all of the uh, delegates, try to get you to move into their space. And then they're counted again. And that number determines how many delegates go to each candidate. Now, you've got to love Iowa Democrats. They may be socialist, but they got rid of Yes. Well, first of all, I want to introduce our guest, Danielle Hornberger. 
uh, who is the wife of the gentleman who was on earlier talking about guns. And, state uh, delegate. Yeah, yep. he's a state delegate, and he used to sit behind me in the legislature before I was asked to leave. And uh, they are from Cecil County, great county. Now, Cecil County, this is a growing county, Daniel. Right. It is. It is. Um, we are 15 minutes from the Pennsylvania and Delaware line, mm -hmm. uh, right at the top of the bay. In fact, uh, I am actually in a little town called Northeast. I've heard of that, yeah. Yeah, so um, that's good that you've heard of it. Yes. Most people mm -hmm. say, where is that again? <laughs> no, so. We've heard of that. And also, you work with uh, Congressman Andy Harris. I do, yes. yes so. Uh, this is just north of Bel Air and Harford County, and it's a growing area. If you take I-95, there's a sign that says, Welcome to Northeast. Really? Yep. Is Got that it. Right? That yeah. is right. That is right. I've, I've seen know. it. <laughs> well, that's a good sign, believe me. <laughs> Let me tell you. you it should say, the sign should say, You are actually 60 miles from the destruction of Baltimore City. Yes. But it's beautiful up there. It really is beautiful yeah. up there. It is beautiful. We hope to keep it that way. Yeah. That's... No. Uh, big topic in, in Cecil County these what are, days, what actually. Are, what's the, what are the challenges in Cecil County, keeping Cecil County the way it is instead of the way this, uh, the Southern Maryland has become? You've got it, actually. Uh, so I'm originally from Southern Maryland. I'm oh, from really? Waldorf. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's so many comparisons I could make when I was younger to Waldorf, Maryland, to, you know, areas in Cecil County. Uh, but it, there are a lot of concerned uh, citizens. In fact, I've been door knocking. I'm the reason she, she just doesn't go out and knock on doors as a person, <laughs> I forgot to say, she's actually a Republican candidate for county executive. They have a county executive there. Now, they haven't yeah. had one forever. It's been so, sort of a recent thing as the county has, has grown. That's correct. Charter uh, government is so fairly new to us. Your election is in April. Yes. Do you know what the date is? The April? Yeah, April 28th. You would. You would. I would. I happen Crush to know account. that. <laughs> so she just doesn't knock on doors. Right. She's yeah. doing it because she's running. So anyway, uh, we'll talk some more about uh, Cecil County and some of the problems up there. It's a great area. It's a beautiful area. It's a growing, it is. growing it is. area. Uh, but the Democrat Party, we're talking about, uh, in my commentary, I thought more and more about this. Like one of the thoughts that struck me, Bernie, uh, the whole bunch, Bidens, Clinton, they're all they're older people. They're going to be gone. Yeah. And you know the socialists, they like to get in there. Once they get in, you can't get them out. They are like cockroaches. They don't go away. And they would love to get Bernie. They want Bernie to get that nomination. They really they don't care if Bernie wins or not. They're going to try to work to make him win. But once he takes control of the Democrat apparatus, think about the socialists. They don't give anything up. And they're fast and furious. They try to do. It's just like. Uh, with now down in the General Assembly, you got all these lefties that, that Kevin works with. Absolutely. And, they're, and look at all the nonsense they are putting out fast and furious. Get that stuff passed, you know. Well, I think, I think you're right. It's, it's not just the socialists who don't give anything up. But, you know, when, when these groups, when the liberals get in control, I mean, look out. And that's what I, I have seen. Uh, in fact, I was talking to someone recently. I can't remember who. But um, where it's actually uh, somewhat widely known now that there are um, there is a liberal agenda to go to rural areas oh, and yeah. and take over to infiltrate. Well, we see it in Baltimore County. We do. They they have taken over. They have taken over uh, since Johnny Olszewski has been the county executive in Baltimore County. First thing he did was a tax hike. Then he confirmed in writing that we're going to be a sanctuary county. The crime has increased. Of course, we've had liberals in charge under Kamenitz, Rupert, Berger, Smith, the whole bunch. They've been in there for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to get any better because worse than that, of the seven council members, four are liberals. And, and the three Republicans, they just voted uh, on, a, on a gun bill uh, to make the gun shops, the dealerships, the 20 dealerships in Baltimore County spend $75,000 putting uh, cages and everything else all around, like turning them into castles, which is unnecessary. Right. Now, the small shops, the mom and pop shops, they can't afford 
seventy-five thousand dollars. Sure. But this was simply Johnny Olszewski putting his liberal anti-gun scalp on the wall because he's running for governor. So he's he's running an agenda not for Baltimore County, the people that elected him. He's running an agenda for Montgomery County. Well, if conservatives do not get together and act as a group, we're just completely doomed. This the entire state, I believe, is oh, doomed. Oh, well, the states in there. Them. There's no place. And and uh, the irony is, every single state in the union that does it follows this example. It has been doomed. Uh, New York, California, uh, Massachusetts, uh, Connecticut. Well, they're all losing population. Forty percent of each one of those states, the population wants to leave, and the reason they want to leave is because of the things they have put, the the, the, the laws they've implemented, are not conducive to have a, a pleasant place to live. No, I mean it's regulations, it's straitjackets, it's taxing and spending, and unfortunately, Maryland. Uh, like I mentioned in my commentary, the Democrat Party is now the Socialist Party, and they're going to implement all kind of crazy things. We may benefit. The conservatives may have gotten a break there because a lot of these traditional co constituencies, like President Trump, according to Gallup, is getting 25 to 30 percent of the black vote favorable. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. Now, First that's unheard of. Yep. If, if a Republican conservative got 5 percent of the black vote, that was amazing. If he or she got 10%, we automatically ran them for president. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. Mitt Romney got 3%, if I remember correctly. It yeah. was very low. I don't think Mitt Romney yeah. could get 3% of the Republican vote. I don't now. think today he couldn't. He certainly no. couldn't. No, not today. <laughs> but he's the kind. He represents the weakness. The, uh, but here in the Republican Party in Maryland, uh, what I see coming on the horizon, you're going to have a very, very deep split between the Larry Hogan, Rhino, establishment, well-financed Republicans, and the Trump conservative working class uh, conservatives in this state. I mean, you know, Absolutely. Is, uh, there, is, is there room for a Trump conservative in the state of Maryland? Yeah, I we think have so. Some. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. there, really? yeah. yeah. And, and I think there, um, it's important to make that designation too, right? Um, because it's Actually, we hear this a lot, right? The the eleventh commandment, you know. We we. But the, the Larry Hogan types, they don't think believe in that. They don't. They and will beat so, the heck out of a conservative. Sure, sure. And so we have to kind of realize also what kind of conservative are we dealing with, and forward that agenda or not? Because if we're dealing with the Rhino conservative, who is, in my mind. That may as well be a they're, liberal. They're very dangerous. They're, they're very dangerous because that's how that agenda gets in slowly but surely. And next thing you know, we have Baltimore. You know. Well, even in your area, Cecil County, for example, that's the, probably I don't know much about that, but I would assume that that is Trump country. Okay? Yeah, it is. It is. Right. And you're a Trump person. I am. I'm a Trump delegate. Actually, you're, you're a Trump delegate. Yes. yes. You are one of the. Irredeemable deplorables. Thank you. <laughs> that ought to get you a like. Very, <laughs> I'm very you proud. Like. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I, I've seen, a, 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 I think the future of the Republican Party and leadership are the women. The women are conservative. We're not the suburban housewife, mushy liberals, undecided, don't know what's going on. Uh, our women in the Republican Party, especially the Trump women, are smart and tough, and they stick to their guns, and they know what's going on. Uh, now, I think that, like, I think Danielle is a classic example of that. If she were successful and won that county executive's position, she would be a great example as a leader. People would see that we have a leader, not like Johnny Olszewski, but someone who is serious about common sense issues and and I, and I and I could probably get a free pass to go to Cecil County. I bet you could. Yeah, I bet I'm you allowed could. to go to Montgomery County, but they won't let me back out, so I don't <laughs> go over there. I talked to Peter Francho. You know, Peter Francho on the floor of the House of Delegates one time called me a member of the Klan. No. Yes, and I stood up, and it was a fun debate. He was all the way in the back. I used to sit in the front, and I stood up and I said, "The last time I looked." delegate. They were not hiring Christian Catholics in the Ku Klux Klan. 
It's an interesting comment coming from the party that created the Klan, the Democrats. Oh, yeah. they, ha, they Man, they really got away with well propaganda. Mm -hmm. They were the most pro-slave party. Uh, the Civil Rights Bill would, would not have passed under Johnson were it not for the five Republicans who helped pass the bill. There was a filibuster going on that they helped break up. It was Republicans that helped pass that. This is the kind of history that our kids should be learning oh, in school. Yeah. Well, you're not going to hear it in school. No, no. You no. have to actually read something other. I remember when Ronald Reagan made a comment. He said to uh, someone, we only control and own the White House. He said, we don't control academe. We don't control entertainment. Media, right. We don't control the bureaucracy. We don't control society in terms of culture. We don't control the media. And what the socialists and the radical left have accomplished, it's an amazing accomplishment in a nation based on a constitutional republic of liberty and freedom. Mm -hmm. They have taken control of these constituencies and these institutions in this country. Mm -hmm. And the reason you have millenniums running around who like Fidel Castro and Venezuela is because they have been brainwashed and propagandized K through 12 and at the university. And we have gone into debt to pay for their education. I know. To You're tell their, fill their little heads with lies. And uh, now we want to spend with this uh, Kerwin thing Four billion dollars a year in Kerwin new money, yeah. right? Right. Uh, Just to further that, that agenda, I will say um, that I think that the people are getting smarter, and even the kids are are ready for someone real. Hence. Donald Trump. They're ready to be just told this is a real person. He's he's not perfect. You know, there's no such thing. He has his flaws, but he's going to do what he says. He's going to get the job done and, you know, they're they're ready for that. I, I mean, I'm serious. I'm getting serious with you. We need your help. This is the only conservative television show in the entire state of Maryland. It's the only place you hear another viewpoint. This is the only opportunity you have to see on TV in prime time. Conservative leaders, conservative thought, conservative ideas. You can get started by just simply joining Super Citizen, which costs $20 a year. We have events, public events, where you get to meet people. We have a Saturday night radio show, which uh, has 10,000 listeners, that's a lot of people on a Saturday night. Please become part of Super Citizen. We need you and you need us. I'm Pat McDonald. Thank you.